It was the philosopher Voltaire who said that what made an apple fall from a tree was a force that Isaac Newton labeled as gravity. Gravity is simply a label or a name given to an observable force that is invisible and the source of which has never been known. I will present to you overwhelming experimental and observational evidence that show the force we believe to be gravity comes from the interaction of two fundamentally different magnetic fields. The force we call gravity is in fact a quantum magnetic force that results when these two fields interact. Before I lose those with some knowledge in physics who will say that there are no two fundamentally different magnetic fields, let me explain. The magnetic field that is associated with what is called a particle spin does not depend on an electrical current like the classical magnetic field. For example, a neutron does not have an electrical charge to create a current, yet it has a magnetic field associated with its spin. This magnetic field I call quantized magnetic field rather than spin. Later I will explain why the magnetic field associated with a particle spin or quantized magnetic field does not depend on an electrical current. I will also explain why we do not need to conjure up angular momentum to explain the results of the stern gerlach experiment. Stay with me and give me an opportunity to explain how the interaction between the quantized magnetic field or spin with the classical magnetic field, such as the Earth's magnetic field, result in the force that we have been calling gravity, and to explain how the quantum magnetic field, magnetic force theory resolves all the remaining mysteries in physics. If you are a physics student or a recent graduate, ask your professor, what is the theory or reasoning that allows you to conclude that a neutron spin is based on the electrical current in its quartz, in its quarks? Also ask, it is claimed that the spin is dependent on electrical current, that the quarks create uh, as they supposedly rotate in the neutron. But since the two down quarks uh, electrical charges are canceled by the one up quark charge, then there is no net charge. Uh, and when there is no charge, there is no current. Since there clearly is no charge or current on the neutron, then how does it still have a spin or a quantized magnetic field associated with it? How can we conclude that a neutron spin or quantized magnetic field is generated by a current as the neutron spin when there is no dispute that a neutron does not have a charge? I guarantee you that you will not receive an answer that either you or your professor will be comfortable with. This is just another unexplained phenomena that the quantum magnetic force theory resolves. There are more phenomena that it resolves, such as dark matter and dark energy. They are explained in my book, in which I published the theory, Quantum Magnetic Force on November 3rd, 2019. You can purchase it on Amazon and the link to it uh, is posted below this video. The reason we have been unable to solve physics in our universe is that physicists have been asking the wrong question. It is not that we need an equation or theory of everything. It is that we need to find a theory that puts together the entire puzzle that explains the physics of our universe. And that theory is the quantum magnetic force theory. The force of gravity is in fact the quantum magnetic force that results from the interaction between the particle's quantized magnetic force or spin and the classical magnetic field. The quantum magnetic force theory resolves the remaining mysteries of physics in our universe. And I know this sounds very ambitious, but if you give me an opportunity to present the quantum magnetic force theory to you, I will prove it. 
The laws of physics in our universe have been mysterious, not just due to the conflict between Einstein's theory of general relativity and quantum physics, but also due to gravity not being understood. Not understanding gravity has led to not understanding the laws of physics within a black hole and uh, the enigmatic dark matter and dark energy. The quantum magnetic force theory finally resolves all these mysteries, as well as uniting all the forces in the universe by recognizing that the force we call gravity is in fact the quantum magnetic force that results from the interaction of two magnetic fields, the first being the quantized magnetic field or spin, and the second is the classical magnetic field that you find in nature, such as the Earth's magnetic field. Every particle near the size of atoms, including particles such as alpha particles and carbon-12 atoms, all uh, and all the particles in the standard model of particle physics have a quantized magnetic field near them or associated with them. This quantized magnetic field has been called spin. The other magnetic field is the classical magnetic field that requires an electrical current or magnetic material. The magnetic force that results when these two magnetic fields interact is what Newton labeled as gravity. However, gravity is the quantum magnetic force that we have been observing in the stern gerlach experiment. The force we call gravity never existed for it to be united with the other forces in nature or to be incorporated in the standard model of particle physics. The three fundamental forces, electromagnetism, which includes the quantum magnetic force, the strong and the weak nuclear forces are the only forces in the universe, and at high temperatures, they have already been shown to unite. The only problem in the standard model of particle physics is that it cannot incorporate the force of gravity. Since the force of gravity does not exist, and gravity is actually the quantum magnetic force that is explained by the quantum magnetic force theory, then there is no need to incorporate gravity in the standard model of particle physics. A number of theories dealing with gravity have been considered, such as gravity being a force that is extended from a, another parallel universe, multiverse theory, the string, the string theory, and the possible existence of a graviton particle. Nonetheless, unlike the quantum magnetic force theory, these so-called theories do not have any observational or experimental evidence to support them. They really are speculations, a mathematical construct not based on the observable reality. They, in fact, should be called hypothesis. <clears throat> in fact, these hypotheses and all other hypotheses that attempt to describe gravity have failed. Gravity has always been an enigmatic force that can be observed but not understood within the laws of physics. Einstein's theory of general relativity has been accepted by most physicists uh, to explain gravity, even though it cannot be reconciled with quantum physics. However, there is no dispute that there cannot be two laws of physics, one being the general relativity and the other being the quantum physics. The fact that the theory of general relativity cannot be reconciled with quantum physics necessarily means something is amiss. Thus, there are three possibilities. <clears throat> the first is that quantum physics is erroneous. The second is that we don't have the knowledge to reconcile quantum physics with general relativity. And the third, that general relativity is erroneous. The quantum magnetic force theory will show that the theory of general relativity is erroneous. Physicists such as Max Planck, Einstein, and Schrodinger, and others, were the founding fathers of quantum physics. But ironically, they rejected quantum physics. 
They were responsible for developing the most important terms and equations in quantum physics that led to the development of today's chemistry and electronics. Their rejection of quantum physics is understandable given the non-intuitive nature and the Alice in Wonderland characteristics of quantum physics. However, the debate between Einstein and Niels Bohr concerning quantum physics has been well settled based on a century of observations, experiments, and technological advancements. Quantum physics has been thoroughly tested and repeatedly proven to be a true and accurate description of our world, even though it seems spooky and magical. Given that quantum physics is valid, then we can eliminate any possibility of quantum physics being erroneous. I also believe we can eliminate the possibility that we lack the knowledge needed to reconcile quantum physics with general relativity because there has been a century of many competent and intelligent physicists who attempted to do so but could not. Thus, we can eliminate the second possibility of lacking knowledge. This leaves the third possibility, where the theory of general relativity is erroneous. The quantum magnetic force theory that uh, will show that Einstein's theory of general relativity is, in fact, erroneous. My first major task in proving the quantum magnetic force theory is to dispel a century of physicists misunderstanding the magnetic field associated with what is called a particle spin. I call it a particle's quantized magnetic field. Physicists have been arguing that neutrons quantized magnetic field or spin is a result of the spinning charges on the quarks inside the neutrons. However, there is no doubt that the neutrons have no net electrical charge to create a current, yet neutrons have the quantized magnetic field or spin associated with them. We should simply accept this undisputable fact without assuming something that we know does not exist. Uh, and that is a current, that is a neutron having a current. We have to accept the fact that a quantized magnetic field does not require an electrical current because not only do neutrons not ha uh, have a net electrical charge, but they also have a quantized magnetic field. But also, we know that quarks do not spin on their axis for the same reasons that we know that electrons do not spin on their own axis. Also, the argument that the spin or quantized magnetic field associated with neutron is due to the electrical current of its quarks is completely baseless. It is as ridiculous as claiming that electrons have angular momentum because they are spinning on their axis, when we know that they are not spinning on their axis. The concept, these concepts should be discredited and we should put them, put an end to them. To use the word, the use of the word spin should also be put to an end. I use the word spin here to help those with knowledge in quantum physics to understand what I'm talking about. Eventually, I would like to phase out the word spin and only refer to the quantized magnetic force associated with particles. These quantized magnetic fields exist uh, near particles regardless of whether there is a, an electrical current. We must accept this fact because it is the reality we observe. The quantum magnetic force should eventually replace the word gravity. We are still trying to make sense of quantum physics despite having been repeatedly shown the counterintuitive and spooky nature of quantum physics. The shut up and calculate principle should also apply to the quantum magnetic force theory. 
we should just accept the fact that there is an intrinsic quantized magnetic field associated with every particle which results in the quantum magnetic force when a classical magnetic field is present just as we observed in the stern gerlach and phipps taylor experiment the force that we observed in the stern gerlach and phipps taylor experiment is the quantized magnetic uh, force that exists uh, which exists in two directions, up and down. It is not a uniform force that is evenly spread through space like the classical magnetic fields. In chapter 10 of my book, and in a later video, I will explain how the interaction between the particle's quantized magnetic field and the Earth's magnetic field result in a force on particles that is effectively directed towards the center of the earth. This ha has been the force we've been calling gravity. In my book, which features an equation that calculates the quantum magnetic force, I propose a new design for a fusion reactor based on this quantum magnetic force theory in chapter 12. Building a viable fusion reactor has been my goal since I graduated from Columbia University in 1983. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ITER, in southern France is a project to develop the uh, largest fusion reactor in the world. It is currently under construction. I am not optimistic that it, it will work because it, it has the same design as prior fusion reactors, but with greater size and temperature. However, the prior design uh, had temperatures 10 times that of the sun, <clears throat> and it still did not work. Building more of the same that failed does not assure success. I believe that the uh, design of the fusion reactor that's being built in France failed to account for the tunneling effect in fusion and it failed to account for other quantum physics factors in uh, the fusion, in their fusion design, as explained in my book on chapter 12. In later videos, I hope to explain in detail how the quantum physics theory completes our understanding of all the laws of physics in the universe, how it explains dark matter and dark energy while uniting all the forces in the universe by recognizing where the force of gravity comes from. The reason I am certain that the quantum magnetic force theory is correct is due to the fact that it provides clear answers to all the mysteries in physics by being the missing piece of the puzzle. And it is supported by overwhelming observations and experiments. I challenge anyone to show any fault in the quantum magnetic force theory. I will gladly answer any of your questions and respond to your comments that you can post below. Please pass this video to others who might be interested in this subject. Subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Thank you.